In this video, I'm going to talk about sex. Um, and I'm going to talk about sex in the context of love because this course is really all about love. Um, before I jump into that, I wanted to um, kind of touch on something from the last video, and that is children, which are obviously a big part of sex. And that is, um, I talked about how on the level of spiritual love, having children can be an act of spiritual love. Um, the reality is, having children is always an act of spiritual love. But oftentimes people don't recognize that. Um, one of the interesting things I find is that there's a tremendous, I, I would say, probably everyone in some way is shedding light and love, having spiritual love. Um, but a lot of people don't recognize that they're even doing that. It's like they're not aware of the light of their soul. They're not aware of the light they're leaving. And they, um, you know, they're just not aware of it. And um, I've seen healers who do great work and when they get done, it's like everything feels beautiful, everything feels wonderful, and, I, and I'll feel like I have this moment of light with them. And I can see that they're not recognizing the light they've just given me. And I think we do this thing, it's a common thing that's done with children, you know. Children are an act of spiritual love, but is the person having the child? Is the healer doing the healer? Is the person who's doing the smiling? Do they recognize their own light? And one of the most interesting things about us humans are, we can go around shedding light and not even know it, not even recognize it, not even see the light in ourselves, you know. Um, and, um, and with children, this is done a lot. We can get so wrapped up in our pain that we can just not see our light. Like I said, the light's right here, right? It's, it's right there. But if we're focused on those hard things in life, the emptiness and the void, we won't see it. Even though we're giving it around, we won't even know we're giving it. And so ultimately, when we don't recognize our light, it's our own selves that's being robbed. We're still shedding a lot more of it than we would realize, but we're the ones who are missing out. This one girl told me a story once about, um, you know, a friend of hers got in an accident, got injured, and, um, and she went to go see him in the hospital. I don't know what happened after that, I don't remember the details, but she didn't see him for many, 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 many years um, after that. And um, they were both very young, like, you know, early 20s or teenagers or something, super young. And, um, you know, years and years later, they somehow reconnected. And, you know, he told her how, how, how wonderful it was for um, him, for her to be there. And he remembered her smiling face and how that was so helpful to him. And he, he still rem he remembers it to this day and is thankful about it. Um, and this person's like, who, me? This person doesn't like her own smile. <laughs> yeah. But here is a guy who remembers it 20 years later. And we can walk around giving light to people all day long without even realizing it. In little ways and big ways. Big ways, you heal someone and you don't even, not even aware of the light. So it's really so important you know, to recognize our soul's always doing something here. So let's learn to see our soul, take away, from, take our eyes off the, the emptiness, take our eyes away from the, the fears, and watch that light, especially if that light is children. If, you know, watch the light of your children, okay? Because um, that's really um, the light that really never goes out, because the light of your children is what's going to continue and have children and continue to have children. That's the light on this plane, on the earth plane, that's never go out. After your soul leaves, it's the only light you have left. They're always an uh, act of spiritual love and it's just important to look away from our negativity so we can see that more. Okay? Um, okay, so sex. We're going to see if sex, we're, we're going to talk about sex as an act of love. Now we all know sex feels good, 
But that doesn't mean it's love, right? Because feeling good is not a definition of love. A lot of people think feeling good is love. I love sugar, I love, I love this, I love this, I love this, and I love this, and none of it's all killing me. No, it's not love. Love is useful. If it feels good, that means you can continue using it. That's all it means. Okay, you can continue to love it. If it's good for you and it doesn't feel good, then you can't keep using it. You're going to eventually have to stop, okay? So the only thing that feeling good does is mean if love is there, you can sustain it, okay? So, sex is not love because it feels good at all. It has nothing to do with that. Because it feels good, it's possible for sex to be sustainable and it's possible to have committable, sustainable sexual relationships. That's all the feel-good part means, okay? But to see if it's love, we have to look at it and say, is it useful, okay? Um, and the interesting about sex is, we can argue both ways. You know, we can argue it's useful, and then we can say, but on the other end, Sex is very much a double-edged sword, okay? So on a material level, how is sex an act of love? How is it useful? Okay, well, a large part, portion of the population will be physically healthier if they have sex, okay? It's just they will. They'll physically be healthier, more vital people, okay? There are some people that have sex will become more drained people. Everyone who's a man who has excess sex will in time become a more drained person. So sex in excess is never useful. Okay? But sex in the right amount is useful on the physical level for health. It, maintains the, it helps maintain the physical body. The body is designed to have sex because God wants the bodies to procreate. And if the things that the body's designed to do, if we don't do it, the body can't be as healthy. So if we don't get sunshine, if we don't go exercise, we'll get sick. Same with sex. A large, some people won't, okay? But a large part of the population will not be as well off physically if they're not having sex. That's why the Japanese, they, they really were big believers of this. Um, why they had geishas, because, you know, that was a way for men to stay healthy, okay? And um, so it's useful in that respect, okay? Um, now, the problem with it is, is that sex has this side effect of pregnancy, okay? And because of that, and because people don't want to be pregnant, they start finding ways not to be pregnant. And sadly, all of these ways are not useful for your body. None of these ways of trying not to have babies is an act of love. None of it's useful to your body. Some mean methods hurt more than others, but none of them are completely healthy. The only completely healthy method of trying to avoid pregnancy is um, to watch your cycle, measure your temperature, ladies, and um, check out your fluids and see if you're overlading and be careful that you let your man go be sick <laughs> when you're overlading so that you don't get pregnant and don't be useful to him then. And then um, you can manage it without being ill. There's a great book called Taking Charge of Your Fertility that talks all about that, whether you want to not be pregnant or you want to assist being pregnant. That book has the whole science of it in a way that you can have your own little laboratory next to your bed and monitor yourself and know what's going on and um, what your pregnancy chances are. The problem with that is it's so easy to make a mistake. It's so easy to just your cycle to change a little bit and you got lazy with, you know, examining yourself and boom, all of a sudden you're pregnant, okay? Um, or you could be in a period where you just ovulated and you're not going to have sex but you're just having a little fun and somehow one little semen somehow 
gets down there and finds his way to your egg and you're pregnant. So the point I'm making is it's not a there's it's not it's not a hundred percent. And no method of pregnancy is hundred percent. If you drop in eggs, there's nothing that's hundred percent accurate. Okay? Um, and it seems like the more highly accurate they are, or highly um, prohibitive they are, how much they work, how high the percentage is of not having pregnancy, the more harmful they usually are for the woman. So at that point, we're again, we're dealing with it, a double-edged sword. It's useful, but it's not useful. Okay. At that point, it's useful for the man. It's not useful for the woman. The woman's getting sick because she's taking the drugs. The man's not. All right, so let's tie his tubes. Okay, now, now that everyone can be healthy. No, if a man ties his tubes, he's not going to be healthy. That actually causes a whole other type of pathology in a man. Okay, so the fact that pregnancy leads to sex means that it's a, a difficult to debate. Is decide is it worth having sex? Is sex an act of love? Um, if I have to destroy my body in other ways in order to, you know, have and create more vital energy in my body through the act of sex, okay? And um, is it worth risking a child when I'm not ready for it? I mean, is it worth risking a child with someone who I don't have the right connection with, who's just kind of here now? Um, so these are like heavy questions and makes it something that we can't definitively say Sex on a material level is an act of love. We can't just argue that and say it. But we can't say, well, it's not an act of love because, yeah, it is good for a person physically. Okay? So I don't think we can really answer this question of material sex in any way that's clear, that's perfectly clear, unless you're older. If you're older, and there's no risk of children because you're not dropping eggs, then you can have materially useful sex. And the only way, and therefore it's an act of love, and the only way it's not going to be useful for you is if you catch some kind of disease. Okay? And I'm not just talking scary diseases down there that everyone's so scared about. I'm talking the equally scary diseases of mono and, and catching a strep virus and who knows, you might even catch COVID. <laughs> so, on a level of pure, is sex materially useful? It can be. It's really, really risky at the same time to where all of a sudden, the usefulness turns into, oops, actually that wasn't useful. But um, it's certainly less risk of that if the woman who's having sex is not having issues with um, you know, with pregnancy, okay? Um, doesn't have to, you know, hurt her body in order to not be pregnant, okay? Or have a child when she's not ready to, all right? So I'm not even going to try to answer it on the level of material sex. I'm just stating a few facts for you all to examine as you make your own decisions about material sex and um, decide if it's more an act of love for you or is it more an act of um, possibly not love. Okay? And I recommend everyone who's having sex on any level to get that book, um, if you're female, and understand your system, because knowledge is power, knowledge is what gives you choices, and um, you know, it's not a choice to damage your endocrine system, to not get pregnant, and then want, you think you can just get off that and have your body in the right way to have babies when you're 36 years old after years and years, 20 years of damage to your endocrine system, how are you going to make the best baby? You know, you're not going to be able to. So we really need to get off this mass use of um, anti-pregnancy, um, you know, hormones, okay? So um, this book is a way to help women with that. And I think it's the, the best possible way if that doesn't cause any problems, okay? Um, <clears throat> And it's really effective. If you do the job, it'll be effective. Okay? All right, on an emotional level, is sex useful? It still feels good on an emotional level, or it should. Um, I think oftentimes sex feels 
better on a physical level than it does on an emotional level. For many, many people, and you know, in many, many situations, sex can actually not feel that good on an emotional level. Okay? Um, but how can it be useful on an emotional level? Obviously, it allows for two people to feel mo like more connected beings. It's useful to feel connected on an emotional level. Okay? Feeling connected on an emotional level allows for emotional healing. Okay? Um, it's useful on an emotional level to have sex because during sex, you're focused on your partner, your partner's focused on you. Um, that's a hard thing to do in this modern, hectic world where everyone's juggling 200 things. Sometimes it's just really, really hard to focus on your partner. But one of the great things about sex, when you're having sex, the rest of the world kind of disappears. And um, you're very focused. For that reason, in astrology, the seventh house, which is the house of sex, is the house of concentration. Because the easiest time humans have to concentrate is when they have sex. If only we can concentrate that good when we were doing everything else, right? Um, but it's the how we first are most concentrated, simply on the partner during sex. So, um, it allows two people to see each other, to focus on each other, to see each other, where maybe they're not seeing each other all day long because of the bustle and the chaos and the distractions. Um, and that's helpful, that's useful, because it helps maintain the connection, the relationship, both people can feel seen, okay, and, um, and feeling seen, it's useful to their relationship because it keeps them together, okay. Um, now, like I said, on the emotional level, sex doesn't always feel good. It's so easy for sex to feel good on a physical level because it has to do with the bodies and God designed it to feel good physically so there would be lots of little babies running around. But on an emotional level, you know, God's not that concerned about making it feel good. It's harder to make it feel good on an emotional level. There's a determinative factor, and that is your emotional health, your emotional well-being, your emotional openness. For it to feel good on an emotional level, the people have to be emotionally open. If they're not open on an emotional level, it won't really feel that good on an emotional level. And then they won't be having sustainable, committable, emotional sex. Okay? Um, and they won't even be able to have emotional sex because it won't have any emotional value. A lot of people have suffered sexual abuse in this world. As a result of that, being open emotionally during sex can be really, really hard, okay? And until a lot of emotional healing takes place, they're not going to be available for emotional sex, okay? And then the sex can be felt on a material level. It can be material sex, but it won't be experienced on the emotional level, and therefore it'll be lacking, okay? So, to share emotional sex, you have to have the commodity of emotional openness, okay? to truly to let someone into your space emotionally in a very, very intimate way, okay? The type of intimacy is different for men and women, you know, um, but they both have to have that. If not, they won't be emotionally open to sex. If a person's scared of being seen, to really have people see who they are, they won't be available for emotionally for emotional sex, for sex on the emotional level, okay? So as always, in this day and age, we're really, really, it's the emotional level we're struggling with. And so, um, sadly, a lot of people's sex life is curbed by the fact that it's, they struggle to have emotional sex, okay? Um, a lot of people aren't able to go to a place of any emotional connection without help, of some substance, whether it's alcohol or something else, and then they can, their boundaries, their barriers can be dropped, and they can be more available for emotionally available sex. But then that's not really the same, okay? It allows for a little more feeling of connection for lots of people, but those wounds that are causing the closure, those are what really need to be addressed, those are what really need to be helped out. Um, 
in order to have, you know, really beautiful, emotionally connective sex, okay? And um, it's a surprisingly rare thing to have emotional sex. As much sex as is happening around here, so much of it is happening in the conjunction with tipsy people um, or people who just can't be open, but they, it, it still feels worth doing because on a physical level it feels good. And a lot of people are, you know, trying to be more open during sex and trying to make progress in that, even though it's a struggle. Um, and, you know, trying to trust people in um, another person in a vulnerable situation, a situation where both men and women can be, uh, you know, are very, put in a very vulnerable um, position with respect to their feelings and their needs and wants. And so, um, you know, we can write books on this topic. Books have been written. I don't want to get too off tangent, but so it's useful if you have the emotional openness to have it. Okay. Now, if people are having emotionally loving sex, which means it's emotionally useful, it helps them on an emotional level, that means it also heals each person on an emotional level. Okay? It helps them deal with their emotional pains, helps them process and work through their emotional pains. So it can be emotionally healing for people to have sex. Okay? And it should be. Okay, it should have that use, all right? Um, it should have a, a, a true value to the person besides it feels good, okay? And once, if people are having sex on an emotional level, then if they have children, they have a better foundation to raise those children healthily, okay? And to have the energy, especially the emotional energy, to raise those kids. Because if people are connecting on an emotional level, okay, then they're going to be emotionally more energized, and then they're going to have more energy, emotional energy, that really, really helps when you're having kids. Because kids take so much work physically and energetically, and even spiritually, that um, having a partner who's emotionally useful having a partner who's materially useful makes having children way more feasible of an adventure, okay, where it could be a lot healthier, a lot less stressful, and ultimately a better experience for the kid. So, um, and so if pregnancy happens during emotional sex, it's not such a travesty as when it happens if people are just having material sex, okay? Because if you accidentally get pregnant, oh, and because you just have a material sex, oh my gosh, if you just open up a can of worms. But if you actually have an emotional connection um, with someone, then this is a much more manageable experience, you know? And, um, and it can much more, e by that I mean it can very easily be seen as a desired experience. And, um, so, I think it's best to answer the question of, of, is material sex useful, if we look and say, is there emotional love in the sex? Is this sex an act of emotional love as well? If it is an act of emotional love, then the answer of, is sex useful on material level, becomes much better. One reason is, because if children show up, Maybe it could actually, actually feel good. It's more likely going to feel good than if there's not that emotional connection. Okay? I mean, imagine you're not even feeling emotionally connected to someone and then they tell you they're pregnant and you're like, oh my God, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know if I like you. I'm not even feeling emotionally peaceful and happy and joyful and connected with you. And I have to think if I want to raise a kid with you. And that's like, Phew. But if like you're emotionally connected, and they're pregnant, it's like, wow, it's so much easier to see that as a blessing, okay, as the act of spiritual love that it is. So, I think it's best to answer the question of material love in conjunction with the question of emotional love, okay? Um, 
<coughs> on the level of spiritual love, is love is sex useful on the level of spiritual love? Can it be spiritual love? I mean, can sex be useful spiritually to shed our light? Yes, it can be. Because it can give you children, right? Talked enough about that one. It can also be useful if people want to collect the sexual energy that's created through sex, and instead of using it and losing it, <laughs> using it to bring that energy up into their chakras and into their brain for deeper spiritual experiences. Kind of like a supercharged meditation, let's just call it that for now. Um, and a lot of people like to proceed to have sex without intention. Um, although oftentimes, it's oftentimes actually just more of an excuse of how I can get away having lots of sex that feels good. Um, and, but it is actually possible to have spiritual sex. However, unless a person has the ability to really draw their energy up into their higher chakras through some meditative practices, then they're not going to be capable of spiritual sex. It's just not going to happen. They can say it's that, but it's not. Okay? Um, but if a person can do that, has practiced that and can do that, then yes, they can work with their sexual energy. They can work with the extra sexual energy that's stirred up by their beloved and use that extra energy to, um, you know, put into their meditations, basically, to put into their higher chakras. Okay, um, but that can't be done until a person can work with that energy anyway. Okay, so the reality is most people aren't in a place to have sex be useful on a spiritual level unless they're having children. Okay, so is sex useful? Is sex an act of love? Really needs to be answered on the level of um, the material usefulness and the emotional usefulness for most people, okay? And unless it goes to excess, it's materially useful, it's not easy, okay? Unless it goes to excess. Excess is different for different amount of people, particularly men. Men are the ones who suffer physically from sexual excess, okay? And it depends on the person, you know, how they're geared, what excess is, okay? Um, in, you know, but material sex is not useful if it hurts a woman's body. Material sex is not useful if somebody gets a disease. And by disease, I don't even mean like a scary disease. I just mean getting strep. You know, strep is like a really serious bacteria that can be in you and mutate and go everywhere and um, cause you problems for many, 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 many years. Okay? So, um, it really is a question that's been answered on the level of emotional value. And if the answer is yes on the level of emotions, one of the great things about it is that yes starts making a part, the partner an, a, an exclusive partner. If people are just having sex on a material level, there's nothing there to make them exclusive. And if they're not exclusive, they've increased their chance of catching something they don't want to catch. Well, if it's two people, two times. Three people, three times. Ten people, ten times. Depending on how much people. They've just increased their risk factor. And so the chances of that sex not being materially useful has just increased. Okay? There's not that much motivation to have exclusive sex if it's just on the material level, okay? But if people are having sex on an emotional level, then that's a huge incentive to have exclusive sex. And so now, the chances of it being materially useful is as high as it's gonna be, okay? And if that scary thing comes along, those side effects show up, then, um, it won't be as, um, the chances of it being a desirable side effect is much greater, okay? 
So those are some things to think about on sex. I don't want to make this a super long video, um, but I wanted to make a separate video because sex is available to be useful on all three levels. It's just um, not simple because it is a double-edged sword. Um, and ultimately, it's not really worth it, the material benefits, what a woman gets from sex. The material health benefits a woman gets from sex is not really worth what birth control does to her body. Um, so if it's not happening on an emotional level, it's not a good trade. It's not a good deal. And love, it's all about the deal. It's ruled by Libra and Venus, which is, okay, I'm dealing, I'm willing and dealing here. I want it to be more useful, I want more use in my life, I want more love in my life, I want more good stuff in my life. That's what we're shopping for, okay? All right, um, I think that's really all I have to say about that. Okay, thank you.